Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. And I have an oscilloscope to review this morning. This is the Tooltop ET120 MC2 Plus 1. Tooltop sent me this free of charge to review, asked me to take a look at it, but I'm not being paid to make this review video and I have full editorial control over the contents. So this is my honest opinion in this video of this scope. So this is not a scope meter, it's an oscilloscope with built-in function generator. So the signal generator, sine triangle up to 100 kilohertz, square wave 10 hertz to 3 megahertz. Okay, you can change the duty cycle, 0 to 3 volts peak to peak, very normal. The oscilloscope is rated as 120 megahertz, and this may look very familiar to you because not so long ago, I reviewed this. This is the ET120M Pro. So that's also a 120 megahertz oscilloscope with a built-in function generator, and it looks very similar in the specification. So what's the difference? Well, this is a single channel scope, okay? And this is a dual channel scope. That's the basic difference between the two. Let's just compare them. So this is the previous one that I reviewed and I will link that video in the video description here so you can go and have a look. It comes with a nice little carry case. Obviously these are meant to be portable devices, okay? The dual channel one comes with two scope probes look fairly standard to me apart from one thing which we'll just talk about in a moment and it also comes with a lead you can use if you like as a probe or if you want to use on the function generator okay usb-c charging lead ubiquitous these days everything has these really the first difference i noticed and this i said we would come to is this has a standard BNC, whereas this has three of these little, I'm not totally sure what you call them. They're a bit like an SMA type connector, but I'm not sure they are exactly that. Okay. This has channel one, channel two out. So you can connect, obviously, three leads onto that one. Okay. One thing that is the same, and I liked this on the previous model, it actually has a physical on off switch. Okay. Let's see if they boot up the same speed. So we'll switch them both on together. Yeah, basically the same booting speed. Okay. So the physical on off switch, I commented that I really like this. This is like old tech if you like. But the point is with this thing, when it's off, it's off. It's not drawing any milliamps or microamps of quiescent current. It's not in standby. So this is the sort of thing you're likely to use in your toolkit on a sort of ad hoc basis when you're on site. It's not gonna go flat. Yeah, the battery's not gonna discharge while you're not using it. And I really like that, and I still really like that, okay? So I'm really glad they kept that feature. If we look at the instruction manual, we will see they're basically the same. So this is the new one with the dual channel, okay? So 120 megahertz, the same. Basically, I think these are really the same device. This just has two channels on it. Everything else looks to be the same. Note that this has a maximum 80 volt test voltage on the one times probe. So if you're on high voltage stuff or you don't know the voltage, you need to set this to 10 times first. Now that's not true of all oscilloscopes. It does seem to be the case on a lot of these lower cost ones. And while we're talking about cost, let's have a look now to see how much this thing is. Let's not look at it first and then you're thinking, hey Rich, but how much is it? Let's have a look now. And I think you'd be quite pleasantly surprised at the price of this device. Here is the link. So you'll see there's actually two options here. Very little difference in price. The difference I can see is basically with the second option, you get two oscilloscope probes. So this is quite a low cost device, I think, for a dual channel portable scope. That is towards the budget end of the market, especially for the 120 megahertz. So that is the price. This will include VAT, 
over in the Canary Islands here, for example, we get 21% off that, which is about another 14 or 15 euros. So if you somewhere that don't pay the VAT, then this is going to cost you about 54, 55 euros, something like that. Okay. Now you'll see in the features and it didn't mention this in the manual. Maybe it does. I just didn't spot it, but certainly on the listing. So you know what you are buying. In single channel mode, this is 120 megahertz bandwidth. And we'll test that in a minute, but the other model certainly did work. In dual channel mode, it's 40. Now, I think this is probably the case for a lot of dual channel scopes, but maybe they're not quite so transparent about giving you that information, okay? I think that's commendable that they do tell us this, so at least when you buy if you buy you know what you are buying let's concentrate on this new model which we're going to review today so these little connectors obviously these are fitted just to save space basically i've seen these on a few handheld scopes before i had to google it because i wasn't sure i thought it looked a bit like an sma connector but it isn't this is actually mcx connector so I had a look on AliExpress to see if we can buy scope probes with these type of connectors because that was one of my concerns. What if the scope probe breaks? Can we buy another one? And you can buy them. They're not as readily available as the BNC ones, but they certainly are available. AliExpress, for example, where I'm looking. So if you do happen to break one of these types of scope probes, yeah, you can get replacements. So down to your personal opinion on that what i will say with these is it's much harder to come into contact with the metal work so they're safer if you're using a handheld scope which obviously is isolated from the mains to probe something like power supply switch mode power supplies which you can do with these okay the buttons are exactly the same as the previous model so i think we'll concentrate on the differences which is the dual channel as i say there's a physical on off switch on this so the buttons are all the same the differences will be in the on-screen menus to select the second channel i'm in single channel mode right now now i noticed when i previously tried the other model just how nice the interface on this is so we have this button mode okay yeah and you see the little symbol here changes to the direction arrows or plus. So in the direction arrows, this literally moves the waveform up and down. It also will move it left and right when we have a waveform we can look at. Okay. If we go to the other mode, you'll find it up here. It just is changing the voltage. Now, the maximum sensitivity of these little scopes is 50 millivolts that is not particularly sensitive for a scope it's okay for a lot of situations but if you have very small signal levels you may find that isn't enough so that could be a limitation again depending on what you're using this for okay the left and right arrow buttons if you look at the top are just changing the time base so actually the time base on this goes down really quite low okay and these extra buttons are for the trigger levels so we have like a little red arrow here and that just easily lets you set the trigger level now i find that really intuitive it's a good user interface because usually you're having to fiddle around in the menus to set the trigger level and this is a common thing you want to do so that's the same as a previous model and i think you will find that really handy to use the least buttons you've got to press to get to these useful things the better in my opinion okay so i've attached my signal generator this is the project i'm still working on so it's not encasing anything it's just sitting on the desk it's a little bit sensitive to just put your hand by it so you get a little bit of jitter in the display that isn't the scope that literally is the signal generator i have it at the moment we can see set to 
50 megahertz so it's quite a high frequency and you can see now that I can actually alter the trigger level so changing the trigger that's a little red arrow if we go out of the range of the waveform you see it loses the trigger you expect it to do that so we can set the trigger level we can set the time base and we can set the sensitivity okay and this is giving us the average size of the waveform which actually is quite small frequency is 50.8 megahertz this little signal generator isn't really calibrated that's something though I will be working on we actually I say we there's myself a guy named Manticore one of the subscribers and a guy named John Hawks who I've managed to get to work on this so we're actually going to make a really good signal generator from this by the way RF but for testing the scope it's fine so let's go up to a higher frequency I'll just hit the band switch 100 megahertz okay we'll hit the auto yeah so that's working at 100 and now I can actually step that up I'll just select the step frequency okay and we're at 120 megahertz let's just see if we can get it to trigger on that stable and display the frequency okay so I'm on 120 megahertz and you can see it's struggling at that it's showing the waveform and I'm now on 10 times pro because usually you'll find that if you're on a one times probe you can't display high frequency signals very well it's to do with the capacitance of the probe so I'm on 10 times probe and it's trying I mean it's displaying it but it won't show the actual frequency let me go down again 119 and again it struggles to actually display the frequency on that one okay I'm down to 100 megahertz now it's showing 101 on the display this seems to be about the limit really yes I can display waveforms higher frequencies than that but I can't actually display the parameters so I think that's about the top of the limit for this one to be quite honest now let's go into dual channel mode and let's have a look okay so with 40 megahertz coming in on the RF generator I have 10 megahertz coming in on the other generator and it's happily displaying both it appears to trigger on channel 1 I'm not sure how you can actually make it trigger on channel 2 uh, I'm within the space of channel 2 now but it doesn't trigger and another thing I've noticed as well which I'll mention is you can't from what I can see switch off channel one and use just channel two it's kind of like channel one or one plus two that's a bit unusual for a dual channel scope normally you can use either or or both yeah this doesn't really seem to have that facility whether that's really a limitation i'm not totally sure okay i think we can prove this point so if i disconnect the 40 megahertz signal i just have the 10 megahertz on channel 2 I'll move the trigger point oh now it does trigger on it so it will trigger on channel 2 but it seems to trigger on channel 1 in preference if you see what I mean it's also showing 0 Hertz so these parameters are still in green I need to see if I can change the parameters to channel 2 short press yes I can so it's now showing 10 megahertz okay maybe this is how the triggering works we'll hit auto it will now trigger on channel 2 oh so it appears to trigger on whichever one you actually select but you'll see now that channel 1 I've reconnected I've lost the signal 
that's because the settings on here have changed. So when it changed this one, it's also changed that one. So quick press. No, it looks, like, it looks like I have to switch channel two off before I can change the settings on channel one. Okay. Trigger on that one. Okay, 40 megahertz. Put channel two back on. It's now triggering on channel one and displaying channel two. So if we hit, yep, that changed to 10 megahertz. Okay, so guys, it works, but maybe it's just a little bit of a learning curve. I find that a little bit quirky in use. I wouldn't say it doesn't work. It's just a little bit strange to me in the way it does so. Okay, so that's how this works, guys. Make your own mind up. I'm a bit on the fence with this one. It works, and I think if you just get used to the way in which it works, it does what you would probably want it to do. And this is an inexpensive device meant for field testing. I don't think this is really meant as a bench oscilloscope, although you could use it as such. It has a little stand, so, you know, it stands up there. You could use it as such. But I think its main use is probably as a field test device. We'll take a quick look at the menus on here. I did this in depth on the previous model of this. So we can choose to display waveform voltage, time. We can invert the waveform. We have gen out. So this is a signal generator. It doesn't have any maths functions that I see. Although being an isolated scope and the main reason for maths functions is working on things like hot ground. It probably isn't a big issue with this. But if you want mass functions, bear in mind it doesn't have those. Okay, we can change the grid, we can switch the beep on and off. We can change the brightness. Gen out. So this is the signal generator. Okay, and here then we can set certain frequencies so this is like the other one i looked at the other model so you can set a certain frequency rather than like a free range of frequency for example 10 kilohertz you can change the peak to peak voltage between these various settings okay you can change the duty cycle on the square wave okay and the signal generator was quite nice to use. Again, if you're interested in that, have a look at the review of the previous model, the single channel one, because this is the same, okay? So that's a quick look around it. I think I've given you a good idea of what to expect if you buy one of these as an inexpensive dual channel scope. It's okay. In fact, I think it's just a matter really of getting used to it. It struggled with the quoted frequency range 100 megahertz seemed to be about it on the single channel mode it went up to 40 okay which was the rated specification on the dual channel mode although i haven't the equipment to put 40 megahertz onto both channels 40 and 10 is the most i can do with the equipment i have here so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and think it can do 40 megahertz on both at the same time so that's the ET120 MC2. Guys, get into the comments below there. Let me know what you think of this one, okay? I certainly would not complain if it turned up in my Christmas box or something like that, yeah. And if I didn't have a scope, I just want something especially portable like this. It's one I would consider. Maybe you have the opinion if it doesn't work at the rated spec, then it shouldn't be bought. And I can understand that particular point of view. All I can really do is show you what this actually does. Okay, hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.